yeah, this is not that kind of street. Yeah. And right here, a nice blind corner with some people coming down. So, Pedestrians so far, so good. Yeah, we're going to get fun here. We're going to get some fun here. Should you buy an old Tesla if you want FSD or autopilot or any of those things to work right? Well, uh, we went out on a cruise in one of these, and it worked pretty well, even though we ran it through the ringer. I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. So what you're going to see today is a ridiculous challenge. We drove it through urban centers. We drove it through an area which could only be described as uh, old driveways that are now city streets. And it performed pretty well. As well as the new cars would, you can make a decision for yourself. And mad thanks to Jeff for helping me with this video and taking me on the drive itself. So this is a much longer version of what will be on the main channel, My Tesla Weekend. Here we are on My Tesla Live. You know, uh, let's check it out. This one is a 2017 Model X. So the second year they were produced and I call it kind of a bit of a unicorn because when I bought it, it had the original uh, infotainment system here where this was a separate computer and display. That is the binnacle. And then the, uh, the infotainment was a separate one as well. And uh, I went ahead and had that upgraded. So now this is up to standard with the new stuff or the current stuff. And then this is a side screen to this screen. And then I also had the computer in behind the uh, glove box there's a 24 core, uh, what's the one called? The new self-drive, not self-driving, but the, uh, yeah, I think it is the self-driving computer. So whatever the, the three, modern standard three, I think it was H the third. W yeah, hardware three. So this car is equipped as kind of a unicorn for its age with newer computers than that because I wanted the infotainment stuff and I, so I was crazy. I spent extra money and I did that. <laughs> so you had a score of 98, when did yes. you get FSD? I got it about, two weeks ago and I got it with a score of 92 or three Wow! because they had just lowered the standard I got it and of course immediately wanted to try it out so I did uh, took it over to a friend's house showed it off drove it around a little and uh, well not in it yet here there we are <clears throat> and you can see how the display here changes now it's very different than it used to look this is what's called the new visualization for the autopilot or self-driving system and you see the, the wheels moving itself. It's seeing him and kind of freaking out, which most people driving would because he's a little bit unpredictable there. Yeah, halfway out, turn around, right yeah, back. Yeah, and that's kind of, <clears throat> this looks good. Stay close, we should be okay. So at this point, I'm supervising the car and it's more like, remember we talked about that teenage driver before. Now I'd stop for that yellow light, even though you could have gotten through it. Yes. I overran, so I'm gonna put a little report. That's the report button for when you want to report a video that is of something that just recently happened. Um, this car also has the old controls because it has a standard kind of Mercedes-Benz shifter over here that they got back when, and it has a little autopilot stalk over here on the on the left side that has a knob on top to set the follow distance. So it's the old style autopilot controls. My wife's car, the Model Y, has the sideways screen up here, and you hit the, the gear shift stalk down twice to turn it on. In this one, you you just you tap that twice and it goes on from the little autopilot stall. And so now when it's, the light turns green and we hear that okay, ding. It thinks it's going to make a right turn here. I don't think we're going to make a right turn here. Not with those guys there. It, it, it just mind. turned it. Yep. See, it heard me. <laughs> I don't think so. That is, this is pretty close to the edge here. I'm going to take over. That was a little close. And another report. Yeah, exactly. I try to do that when I can so they get the feedback. But apparently what they need is not so much feedback, but just video footage of all kinds of unique situations. And then what they do is feed that to the neural engine, which trains the system. Do you think we're going to hear that Here's Dojo our hotel. is active at AI Day 2? Boy, I don't know, but probably. Wouldn't they be wanting to report it that way? Well, what's that guy doing? Well, okay. my question would be, what is AI Day 2, if not that? Exactly. Well, they might actually try to show off the bot, although I'm not sure about that either. Um, have you got an idea where you want to go? Should I oh, set it? No, let's, try, let's try pulling over and setting something like Powell's Bookstore here in Portland. That's a nice little place to 
drive well, actually, by that's a few not a minutes. Good one. Oh, the There's Rose a Garden. Historic or? mansion up on the hill. Oh, there you go. That'd What's be, the name of it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's Trey Mansion. Oh. Pitock. There it is. There you go. Let's try that. Okay. So we'll see what happens. Da -da 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 -da. Think a little. Ten minutes. There you go. Perfect. It's got a nice windy hilly drive there. At the oh, end. that should be fun. <laughs> we'll see how to. When I first got this, I actually referred to it as Mr. Toad's Wild Ride because right. it was a little scary. That what, what you have to do is build up your trust in the system, right? Because you know it can do it, but will it do it in the right amount of time? And for my taste, as a driver who drove, I don't know, twenty thousand miles a year, thirty thousand miles a year in pickup trucks all over the Bay Area, it stops late for me. When I see a yellow light or a car slowing down up front, I just lay off the gas. I just let the car settle down. And instead, this one goes right up to the edge and then stops all of a sudden sometimes, for my tastes. And you're engaged right now? It's engaged. It's doing this on its own. It's deciding to go across that intersection. And my feet aren't on the pedal. Now, I could give it a nudge with the accelerator to... I can still keep calling them gas pedals every so often, but the accelerator or the go pedal. And that would confirm with a... It would kind of add a vote to the system deciding what to do. And in fact, could push it right through an intersection if I wanted to. That's now, going on there, drive, isn't that weird? Stop signs. In a car with someone else driving, another human, how often do you feel the desire to intervene? With another human? Yeah. I'm one of those somewhat control freak drivers, yeah. as you might guess. And so for me, now it's saying I need to take over. Okay, so I'll take over. Oh, it's going to count me out there. That's a good thing I didn't let it do that. Um, because I wasn't grabbing the wheel. I was doing that vile. Yes, thank you. I said, oh, yeah, like, okay. Yeah, and I realized, and, it said, and I realized it was taking a while. It was a big update. I said, I betcha, I got it. And I went out to the car, and there it was. So I didn't get an email or anything, you know. But uh, this is average. Here's the one I tried the other day, and it scared me. Because it's, it was much twitchier and much faster and everything. You just saw it trying to do on its own. So I leave it in chill mode. I don't even want to think. They used to call this mode on the autopilot Mad Max. Right. I don't need to live in the Thunderdome. I think I'll, I'll go right with that. But... Uh, when I get the one with the yoke, I would have hoped they could have proportionally changed the steering ratio so you could just go lock to lock with a not full turn. Right. As it turns out, because they still insist on an actual physical connection to the front wheels in the steering system, now, they won't do drive-by wire. wire. Other people have done it. Right. So they're that cautious about you know making sure when the computers aren't doing what they're supposed to do, you still have physical control to steer. Right. Even if you have to wrestle the wheel with no power steering, at least you've got something there. Um, who is it that is also coming out with the yoke? Lexus. Yeah, and theirs there, has the variable rate. Right. Yeah, the ratio change. Let me get rid of this. Do you ever get sick of the look. glass? Sick of the glass. The beautiful panoramic. Oh, no. In fact, I, I think um, people come to this car for the big wing doors, mm -hmm. and they stay for the glass. Because you see what you can see? I mean, the... Yeah. the See, Driving in the city. When I go down the hills in San Francisco, I can see the top of the pyramid. I mean, it's right. it's a totally different view. It's it's that cockpit feel of a helicopter as opposed to, you know, as opposed to being in a... What, the other cars all start to feel like bunkers. Right. You start feeling like you're peeking out of a bumper. But this looks so skinny. It's going for it. And it's got only the one half lane over here. So where are we going here? Are we going to go up the wrong way? Let's try this way. Let's just do a little report on that real quick so they have a nice example of what happens when it goes the wrong way on the wrong side of the street. We'll kick it back on here. It says turn left, right? So let's give it a nudge with the go pedal there. And it's so far so good that way. We're not taking out any pedestrians or anything like that. It's always a nice idea not to. And we're going to turn here to go up the hill. That's what I thought. Okay, good. Now we're back on the course we were on before. Only this time I'm going to pay attention so I don't leave the wheel screaming for me too often. Now it sees all this ahead. It's going to adjust. It's panicking a little there, but yeah, there it goes. So as you can see, it is like a teenage driver, you know? Because often teenage drivers get a little panicked in moments when they think they, they'll often say things like, don't tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And if I could tell this thing what to do, and I do a little with the, the pedals and the controls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nudging. But, uh, you know, like, go ahead, that's a good time, you know, give it a shot. So you push the go pedal and the car goes and crawls out there. It does feel a lot like that. And, it, and especially with the city driving, because there's so many more situations that it has to compensate for. 
What's the name of your car? I call this one um, Mod Extra because ah, it's very extra when you open the doors. Very gotcha. extroverted. Gotcha. And now it is wiping. Oh. See, it'll go ahead because there's the three cameras up here. The binocular vision, two guys that go what 150 meters out, and the one in the middle that goes 250 meters out to see. It has to have that to get good parallax judging. And when I got this, one of the things I did based on what uh, Dirty Tesla Chris had done right. is uh, I calibrated the cameras. I thought, well, let's calibrate the cameras because I saw him do that once when it was acting up on him. And I did it. And the funny thing was, normally in autopilot calibrate, I had new cameras installed once on the side for the update. And normally when you do that, um, you get a... Uh, I don't know, it takes like, a, you know, 15 miles, something like that. Not a real long recalibrate. And the next thing you know, it starts running again. The autopilot will work. But while that's going on and calibrating the side and the, the repeater side cameras and all that, it'll calibrate the car. In this case, I thought it was all done. It would let me use Navigate on autopilot, the highway feature, but it wouldn't let me use the uh, beta full self-driving and so finally I looked a little more and it had another meter running where it had to do more calibrations on the very same cameras to keep going until it was ready for full self beta full self driving beta look at that it's deciding to take a so it said upcoming lane change and it and did it change lanes. yep I turned off the confirm remember I told you before I had confirm on and now this is a green light but it was stopping for him that's how much stop it does for a guy turning in front of it which I would have stopped a little less for that one, actually. Sure. <laughs> but what if it wasn't your car? Exactly. Which, or in the robo taxis, driver, and yeah, it isn't. yeah, exactly. This is a lovely part of Portland up here. I've been to the Rose Garden up here once. It is. We've only been up to the mansion once. Ah. And it was, uh, I want to say, last year, and we decided it was too crowded to try and mm. go inside. Well, it should be interesting An test then. of caution. Yeah, look at that little curb stick. I did see that. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't hit it. Did you see the one where a galley Russell went over a curb? I thought, oh, the poor guy, as neurotic as he is, gets about his car sometimes to have yeah. it, you know, and go a over a curb. Run. Oh, he was at full speed. Now, I go, I've gone over some speed bumps that surprised me in this thing where it did not compensate for them at all. Didn't see them coming. And it went, ba-boom, you know, over them really quickly. But uh, it's doing pretty well right now. I yeah. see it warning you that there's limited uh, distance on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I call the force field. It's actually just the ultrasonic sensors. Mm -hmm. And when I was backing up in the parking oh. lot back there, you saw it there as well. Uh, or you, we didn't see it because you were outside the car, but it was it was how I judged. It had it lets you go down to under 12 inches, and then it just says stop because yeah. it can't be sure there isn't something jutting out of the thing that it can see with a couple of sensors. There could be something jutting out in between. Sure. Once in a parking uh, garage in Hawthorne, California, near the Tesla Design Center, I uh, I backed up, and as I was backing up, I felt a thud and stop all of a sudden, and it was when this was fairly new. I thought I had dented the car for sure. I thought I had wrecked it. I got out and we had stopped one inch short. The car had stopped itself. Oh, it slammed One inch short, so yeah. Hard. So hard I thought I hit it. Wow. And I got out and I looked at oh, it saved me. <laughs> yeah, the first time it really saved me from where it could have done some damage. Look at that interesting pedestrian bridge up there. I like that. Doing a little travelogue for Portland now all of a sudden. <laughs> Well, you know, you pay triple, when you get a That's right. product? What's it doing now? It's not the best of behavior. It's turning. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. But, but the previous, it was that little wobble over the front out. line there was making me a little yeah. nervous. Yeah. And this is not too bad. What a lovely part of the world. Mind if I... Let's see how the... Yeah. It's nice out. Get some of those smells in the car of all those lovely trees. And anybody allergic? I can close it back up. I just, <laughs> I almost, before the sneezing I starts. Almost yeah. slap some oh, stop! There's a stop there. It missed that little buried in the yeah. shrub stop sign. Let's make sure that's reported. Okay, where are we going now? Up the side. Okay, up here. Let's kick it back on again. Let it take over. Yeah, see if we can handle this turn. No, it's not going to do that turn. <laughs> I can feel that already. Okay, how about here? Let's try it again. There we go. And you know, in a in neighborhoods like this, I bring it down five more. <laughs> yeah, twenty is... at home it sets it to twenty five, and there are kids in my I'm, I set it to fifteen. The limit in my might home be neighborhood. twenty five, but this is tight. Yeah, this is not that kind of street. Yeah, and right here, a nice blind corner with some people coming down. So, so far, so good. Yeah, we're gonna get fun here. We're gonna get some fun here. 
hopefully uh, keep the car in an even keel. Oh, don't hit yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We're gonna. I had my thumb on it <laughs> just in case. <laughs> oh, this should be interesting. Turn right here, huh? Okay. 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 Look at it just posturing. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> now, where's oh. the... Whoa, well, okay, I think I'll intercede here real yeah. quickly just because I want to make it's sure everybody time. gets happily by these trees. Yeah. <laughs> there, it's back on again. How do you and we're that? flying off the edge of the road. <laughs> <laughs> no. About tumbling to oh. death. Oh. Yeah, we'll slow down just a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on oh. again. See what I told you about the bumps? It just goes for it. Slow down, slow down. Let's take it down to maybe... 10 here just yeah. for fun <laughs> yeah. so we can all survive for it. it i think it's 20 i think it's 15 now it's seeing finally it sees a speed bump because it's all that and it sees the other car so well look so, at that well, he climbed mount hood four times apparently <laughs> well good for him so i have driven in fsd beta once before yeah i mentioned you mentioned it yeah and the experience was quite good uh, does this make you feel more confident or less uh, Last, you see, this is a much more challenging environment. Downtown Portland is very dense, very busy, very crowded. We were driving around urban, uh, suburban, and and rural streets. Yeah, and they're wide open. Because look at this. Where no, I think going? at that point it kicked off. It kicked off oh. on me, and I didn't realize. Sorry about that. I won't report that one because that was me, not the car. No. No, slow down. Yeah, it's like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> now, this is a road that FSD Beta may have never been on. I'm guessing you're right. Yeah, I'm guessing you're certainly right. Not enough times to have turned. This is turn left. Look at that. I'm putting on the brakes. I, I have to put on the brakes there because I cannot do that. <laughs> cannot watch us collide with the rocks, no. possibly, as we try to be very careful here. How do you respond to people who say, I never consented to be on the road with people testing self-driving vehicles? The destination is on the well, um, you never did a breathalyzer on all the people you drove around with either, and you never knew whether the mental state of all the other drivers was what you thought it might be. I mean, we drive around every day in a world where literally psychotic people can be driving cars around us on two-lane roads and you know threaten us with a head-on collision without us ever having a vote. So if this car is any bit safer on the highway than a typical human driver, then we're doing better. Sure. And it seems to be on the highway. It, if you put it on the highway in a, in a lane at 65 and you set the cruise, it will just keep cruising along very nicely. And it holds its lane, it holds its distance from other cars. So I feel quite a bit better about it in those situations. And uh, this one here though still has some growing up to do, you can tell. It has a lot of learning to do, but the thing that's interesting is on uh, the third, not third row podcast, it's the Silicon Valley Users Group. Today I was watching the uh, the Elon interview, the part three, mm -hmm. and they mentioned that this, this latest one had switched, I think he said it was like before we were on a C program, but we were getting an A, and now we're on an A program and we're getting a C. So they did some swapping that changed it and it's got to work its way back up again. And that's probably why it's less competent than it was when you rode with it the time before. But it should be fixing itself up and learning faster and getting getting better, you know, at a, at a pretty good clip so that we can watch it improve, hopefully. I just really think that this is substantially more challenging driving environments. Oh, it is. This is great. Okay, so now we're going to take the speed down to five five miles. Yeah. I'm going to cancel that destination. Let's put Powell's in. I'd say to those people, aren't all cars experimental? Yeah, exactly. Isn't cruise control experimental? Or at least it was. Do we know that no one on the freeway is going to have a brain aneurysm while driving? Aren't Do we know that they're not going to lose consciousness for any other reason? There's hundreds of people out there every day. What about airbags? What about exactly. What exactly. About, what, if, what if your backup camera gives you bad information and you still hurt someone? Exactly. Okay. There's another car. No, oh. no, 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 no. Slow the hell down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on. I will, I, I will get you there. Don't make me come back there. Yeah. <laughs> I know, you know, I don't mean, come there. on. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Let's try it again. Try it again with a little less speed, okay? And no, not 25, not even 10. How about five right here? 
Let's do five and see how we do. What I'm looking forward to is the days when you put grandma in the self-driving car. Oh, exactly. And you send her off to visit the grandkids and three days later a desiccated corpse arrives. <laughs> exactly. It could well happen. It could well happen. <laughs> yeah, and it's just proof you should have sent more bottled water with the poor deer. <laughs> my God, Brian, what kind of a man man are you to send poor dear grandma off without any water? That's right. My poor imaginary <laughs> grandma. Now All we're going a tad bit too slow. Dead. Mine too, isn't that interesting? Ah, fellow orphan. I don't know where they are. Well, never mind. Another story for another day. Right, right. <laughs> I'm going to engage it again here because I don't have it on. Let's take it down to 10. Come on, take it down to 10. Yeah, this is a chill, chilling moment here, isn't it? Yeah, Little Mr. Toad Harry. got nothing on this. Little Harry. You could pay money at Disneyland to take that ride. Instead, you're getting it from me for free. Curb. There you go. Yeah, but we're not, we're not in it, so... We that hit the drain. Close. It was close. We we didn't even scrape the rims on that one, so I think that's pretty good, actually. Poor Galley. I bet he had, you know, alignment issues after that mm -hmm. island he went over. Mm -hmm. But I kind of thought it was, you know, justified because he kept torturing the car with that whole monorail back and forth BS that really... I don't care whether it's a legal move to do in a car. It's a dumb move to do in a car. Here we go. Let's see how it handles this. Cutting these guys off a little. Um, yeah, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have yeah, taken it quite that sharply. <laughs> that sharply. No, I would have swung it a little yeah. more, yeah, for sure. But it's an artistic difference we're talking to about me, there. That's not a you know criticism. <laughs> well, the beauty of what Galley does with the monorail tests, to yeah. me, is evidence that Tesla is not trying to cheat by solving one-off problems. True, true. Because that would have been something that they could have, have coded it in, right? In you bet, absolutely. On, on after his first test. And oh, this is going to be tricky. This is going to be tricky here. Yeah. Okay, so help me out here because I don't want to make a mistake, but the car is going to give it a go. Oh God. And you, maybe you watch I that way. Yeah, I'll you watch see that anything? Way. I'm going to give it a I little nudge here. Shit. Now there's cars coming up. Now I can see them. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I see. Let's try and... Oh, there's a bus over there that's going to make a... Oh, he's stopping. And he's in the lane over there. So that lane's taken care of for a second. But there's cars coming up. I can't let it do this. I got to... This, this, you're clear after this guy. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, too... That would have been a little too risky. Well, no, we would have just lived there. That would have been <laughs> our new home. <laughs> or maybe it would have been where we ended. Oh, know. yeah. But it's a pretty safe car, In so we case, would have survived. We would have remained there for the rest of our lives. <laughs> That's possible. True. Uh, Did you yeah. know, if you don't take a baby out of water when it's born, it will live the rest of its life without breathing air? I did not know that, but for how long? Not much longer. A minute okay. or two? Yeah, that's... Yeah. that's yeah, till the uh, oxygen, I'm yeah, guessing, yeah. runs out in the bloodstream. Yeah, that'd it's be not pretty a awful. Gill no. solution. No, I should tell that to my daughter who's learning to be a doula. She would want to know that. Oh, yeah. Postpartum doula, so that's an important time to know that. Yeah. You know, water birth, not for long. <laughs> Get them out of there. Yeah. Wait for that first gasp. <sighs> well, it sees this. It's How reading the signals well. About the degree of comfort. And what are we going to hit here? Hmm. I think you're fine. I know, but it took me a second to see that glide path for sure. Um, how do you feel about the styling appointment fit finish on the interior? On the interior, I think this car is great. I mean, I don't know how I got the, uh, the carbon fiber because that was supposed to only be for performance cars or something. But this car was an odd, it, like I said, it's a unicorn. It was a demo that I bought. Uh, I kind of a, apparently I got it as kind of a sneaky deal off of Tesla, meaning they, they asked me, how did you get that car? And I said, well, I just was waiting around and I knew exactly what I wanted. When I saw it, I clicked on it on the web and they said, we usually have a list of people that we get those cars to that are the ones that have been used for demos and they can save a little money on. And we keep a waiting list, but you jumped it because you were there on the system at the right second. I said, oh, so lucky for me. But uh, because of that, I don't know what the deal was with putting this one together. They may have run out of wood dashboards and just thrown a carbon fiber in so they could ship it. I don't know. That is apparently the way Tesla does things like this at times. That was a bit schizo there, a little bit off. Now where are we going to go? Are we going to turn? I don't see a signal. If we're turning, I don't see it. Yeah, I can put on the signal. We can go for it. But the car is looking at this going, hmm, what do I do here? 
Mm. And it says stopped at traffic control, and it wants me to it wants me to buy it. Now that it's put me in the wrong lane, it wants me to buy into. What are we going to do now? I'll tell you what you're going to do now. I'm going to give you a little nudge, and we're going to turn left anyway, since that's what it seems to want to do, and it's easier than violating the law and going off in some other direction. We should probably report that because it's an odd intersection. It might help them out. And that's what they're looking for, is odd things that you can find out in the world with a million cars cruising around. So you feel the... I liked it, yeah. Yeah, it's minimalist. It's yeah. not a BMW or a Mercedes, but it's nice nonetheless. You know, I drove as a loner car, a car like the one right in front of us, like a 350 or one of those GLKs, you know, the little Jeepies from Mercedes. <laughs> the interface inside that car and all the little buttons and all the little gimmicks were so just nonsensically, weirdly, magically redundant and all kinds of things. They were all over the place. They were confusing. They were not clear at all. You know, you have a, a here you have a touch screen. So you just touch, you point, you click on the screen, you know, for everything you do. And there they had this weird little touchpad in front of a mouse sort of device sticking out of the console with a couple of buttons on top like a regular mouse, but not quite. And you could either do it there or on one of them you did touch the screen, but not all. Talk about disparate systems just all over the place. By contrast, a Volvo I got later as a loaner car was really a pleasure to drive. The cruise control all worked very well and everything like that. It had kind of the digital cruise control of keeping the car in the lane and all that with cameras and radar and all that, like this one. That was the closest to the Tesla experience I'd had in another car. But uh, no, I love the interface of this car. I think it does a great job. I like minimalism. I can't wait to get the yoke without the stalks to try that. I think it's gonna be fine, you know? My sister drove me to get my eye surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the way there, I said, oh, let's just pop it in the navigation in, in her Mercedes. And she, uh, I said, we'll just pop it in the navigation. She goes, yeah. yeah, Brian, you do that. You pop it in the navigation. <laughs> and you're going, I've got one good eye and you want me to... Well, no, no, this is before <laughs> okay. the surgery. Right, okay. So I'm like, no problem. And I could not... She never once used her GPS because <laughs> it was so... Con and so I'm surely... Yeah. I can, no, it's yeah. too confusing. I was like, nope, you're right. I give up. Yeah, well, I used to have one of those, a little Nissan Leaf. And the navigation was much weaker. Much weaker. And she, uh, you know, paid a lot extra for it car's got this. It says, but that's a little close. That's a little tight. <laughs> so I'm straightening it out and taking over on my own. Not quite. Not quite, guys. Let's let it do it again. Uh, you got to wonder what they were thinking. Oh, nicely done. Yeah, that was, that extra, was good. Extra bonus points. I wouldn't call that perfect, but it was awfully good. <laughs> now, these are pedestrians, Automobile. Let's try not to kill them. I think that did. Here I was trying to nudge forward. I should wait a second here, but oh, there we go. Now it's got it. And there's another one of those murals. Yeah. So there it is, and there you go. Mad thanks to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, an early look at my 11-year production prediction tracker, and so much more. You guys are the reason this channel is able to keep going, and for the rest of you who want to help out, hit the like button, subscribe, I don't know, leave a comment, uh, you know, make sure that uh, you're sharing this with people who might find it interesting. I'm just glad you're here, and, you know, part of the channel. So, what did I miss, or misunderstand? Leave me all your comments in them comments below, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots when I careen off the embankment at 90 miles an hour in this little subdivision? I guess... Mr. Teddy, he's my dog. Teddy, 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 Teddy. I don't want you sniffing it. You'll leave nose prints on the lens.